the magic factor, the second magic factor that is going to take us to business results. The first was the best people. The second magic factor, any clues what it is? You see it there. The leaders, leaders what? Leaders mood. The leaders mood. Leader on the way to work has an accident. See, I'm sure lots of us have had accidents in our lives. I have had many. <laughs> and when you have an accident, you feel really happy. Early morning on the way to work, somebody comes and hits the buffer at the back. You're like, yes, I'm so happy this happened. Yeah? Is it, is it like that? No, it's like, ah. Oh, that mega wuna, eh? So we get really, really annoyed. As soon as we get angry or upset, your amygdala gets switched on and your frontal lobe gets switched off. It's like a paddle. If you have ever experienced, and I'm sure you have, been in a situation where after the situation was over, you said, I was so angry. I didn't know what I was saying. I was so angry, I didn't know what I did at that time. How many of you have ever experienced something like that? Come, all of us. I can raise, if I had 10 hands, I can raise 10 hands. Why is that? Because your amygdala takes control. Why is your amygdala there as part of your brain? To play a very, very important function. If your amygdala was not there, we would cease to exist. We would not be able to live. All right? It's the amygdala that triggers the stress response. Fight or flight response. Hit or run away. <laughs> All right? See, it's like this, right? We, we, we have been on this planet for how many years? Who knows? Anyone has a guess? How long has Homo sapiens sapiens, modern man, been on this planet. Not all the erectus fellows and all that. Homo sapiens sapiens. Api. So it's around 200,000 years is what we are told. Just compare that to the dinosaurs and we are nothing. Dinosaurs 6.4 million years. <laughs> we are only 200,000 years. Of the 200,000 years, how long have we been actually civilized? Which is living in a house, not in a cave, not up a tree, not in the jungle. Give or take about 15 to 20,000 years. That's like less than 10% of the total time. So, the flight or fight response has evolved to keep us alive, to keep us safe. Because for most of our existence as a species, we were living in the jungle. So when you are living in the jungle, now you just had lunch, which was good, I guess. When you're living in the jungle, if you don't see a sudden movement, you don't eat that day. Because that was lunch. <laughs> that just ran by. <laughs> oh, a lunch time and do it. Lunch. Or worse, if you don't see that, you become the lunch. For somebody else. So if a lion is chasing you in the jungle to eat you up. What should you do, Akila? Stay to have a chat with the lion? Ah, lion, how are you? Run as fast as you can. How fast and how many minutes can you run away from a lion? Irendra. Tell me, give me a number. How long do you think you can run when a lion is chasing you? Two to three minutes. That also, I think you'll be remarkable. <laughs> For me, it's probably like 30 seconds or so. Let's not overestimate me. 30 seconds might be the maximum time I can run away from a lion bounding behind me, right? <laughs> so, either way, in order to run from the lion, amygdala needs to switch on, stress response needs to switch on, adrenaline needs to pump, cortisol needs to pump to give me that extra energy to run as fast as I can. Are you all with me? Because if it doesn't, I'm dead already. Do you see the importance of the amygdala? Have you heard of stories where children, let's say a child has got caught under a vehicle or something and the mother has somehow got superhuman strength and just lifted that car and taken that child out? You have heard of things like this? You try to ask the mother, do it again a second time? Can't. 
But that one instance she did. Why? It was such high stress. I have to save my child. So you do it. So if a lion is chasing us, we can run for, if it's Iran, the three minutes, if it's Sanjeev, 30 seconds, right? Either way, <laughs> end of that time, your stress situation is over. Are you understanding? Either way, the stress situation is over. Because either in 30 seconds or three minutes, you have escaped the lion and you're up a tree or something and you can relax and tell the lion, ooh, ooh, you couldn't catch me. Or the lion has caught you and eaten you up and your stress situation is still over because you're dead. <laughs> I understand it. Either way, stress is over. <laughs> There's no more stress now. So the amygdala and our whole stress response has been engineered not for long-term stress, for small spikes of stress. And then we have to get back to normal. Are you understanding? The problem with our modern organizations and us is that sometimes when we go to bed, we are stressed. Yes? Which means you can't sleep properly also because all the worries are in your mind. I am worried, I am worried. Boss is coming. Boss is worse than the lion now because boss, lion comes and chases you for 30 seconds. Boss is chasing you every day. That fellow doesn't eat you up. What do you do? Okay. So you can't escape now. So when you go to bed, you're stressed. You get up in the morning, you're stressed. You go to office, you're stressed. You're, office, you're, stressed. you're at, always at a high level of stress. So if your stress level is always heightened, you start to have other problems. This gives us rational thinking, decision making, logical thinking, language, mathematics, deciding what should I do, this or this or this or none, <laughs> all that. So as soon as amygdala is there, amygdala is only focused on what? Survival, survival, survival. Your mood affects everyone under you. Their mood doesn't affect you so much. It's not bottom up, it's top down. <laughs> Immunity goes down because when you're under stress, your body can't do the normal maintenance functions. There's a lot of maintenance that happens in the body, especially while sleeping. So if cortisol levels are high, immunity goes down. That's why, have you noticed when you're under stress or you're tired, you get sick faster. You catch everything that's going because stress is high. So as, as modern human beings, we have to figure out that boss chasing us is not a life or death situation. Customer screaming at us doesn't mean we'll die. Missing out on some deadline doesn't mean the world is over. Having some quality problem doesn't mean people are going to die. Or you're going to die. So, we need to look at things differently. See, why does the amygdala uh, kick in? As soon as you panic, amygdala thinks lion is chasing. We need to help this person save his life. Which is not a wrong thing amygdala is doing. Amygdala is doing the right thing. We are giving the wrong signals to the amygdala. So as soon as you and I panic, we think, my God's problem, what do I do? Amygdala says, don't worry, I will save your life. And by the way, amygdala has been doing that job because we are all alive. Of course, we have had stress. <laughs> so, this rational thinking is handled by what is called the frontal lobe or the prefrontal cortex, this part. This is the last part of the brain to evolve. Only we have it and other primates have it. So chimpanzees have it. Dogs don't. So in order to survive, you don't have to think, what's the best decision I can make now? Just run as fast as you can. So now what happens? Amygdala is on, frontal cortex off. You come to work in a bad mood. As soon as you're walking, you see people there. They say, good morning. Say, good morning. Make good morning. Good morning. accident. Good morning. Now what happens? Your mirror neurons. So what is mirror neurons? So there's a mirror there. Same way for all of us. Try going and cracking a joke with your boss on a day that he's in a bad mood. Go. Jolly ne? Right? Are you understanding? So we don't do that because our mirror neurons are telling us, boss is in a bad mood. But don't go today, boss is don't go and ask for leave today. Eta yal na eta. Other youth wanna leave there, right? We, we all do that. So, mirror neurons, immediately everyone in the team picks up on this thing. Boss is in a bad mood. Boss shouted at me. What happens? They mimic. They also get into a bad mood. The team is also now in a bad mood. They are also upset. They are not motivated. 
Now a customer comes and you, you uh, so these the mirror neurons transferring. Customer comes, you argue with the customer. Customer is not happy. The sale that was about to come goes away, and your profits go down. Understood, ladies, gentlemen. Interact. Yes, yes, yes. Can I have a show of hands? Yes, we are up there. Good. So, this is on the basis of a research done by Daniel Goldman, Richard Boyasis, and Annie McGee, where they discovered that the leader's mood has a direct correlation to the bottom line. So, this is not me just saying, this is based on some solid research. The leader's mood and behaviors drive the moods and behaviors of everyone else. So the mood of the leader can create negative underachievers who ignore opportunities or supermen for whom any challenge is surmountable. The leader's mood, you and me. And you know this is true, really. Don't you know this is true on a, on a real, from, a, from, a in, from inside you? You know it's true. Have you realized on days that you are really up, like fully upbeat, you're happy, you're energized, isn't the team also like that? Who is the CEO of HNB now? Jonathan Lalas. Let's say Jonathan Lalas walks in on y'all all HNB guys. Good morning. I'm very upset about the performance. Numbers are down. How would you all feel now? You'd be a, yes sir! How will your mood be? So what you have to understand is that when you're the leader, Think of it, when the president of the country gets on TV, his mood affects all of us. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? One person affects millions. President gets on the country and says, guys, we have a problem, but don't worry, I have a solution. We are working on it. Then our mood changes. We become, oh, great, great, optimistic. President gets on the country and says, what can I do? Not my problem. <laughs> you also think, what do I do? So your leader's mood, your mood affects the moods of everyone else. You are just being the best version of yourself. I cannot be the best version of you, you cannot be the best version of me. You can be the best version of you, I can be the best version of me. We are different. That's fine. That's good. I uh, realized this in a very, very harsh way. So I, I conducted the choir of Methodist College for 10 years. Until I decided enough. I thought, told myself enough and got out. My policy is always, if I cannot do my best for any organization, I should not. One day I realized one of the braver girls came and spoke to me, so these are teenagers, right? They yeah, spoke to me and said, sir, when you come in a bad mood <laughs> for practice, we all know it and we all get really scared, sir. And then we are all so nervous, we can't see much. And that really stuck. And I felt how unfair of me that I should, by my bad mood, be affecting the emotions of 70 young people. Really stuck home. So ever since that day, when I came for practice, if I was in a bad mood, I would stay in the vehicle till my mood was better, and then go. And they're going, and, good morning, good afternoon, good whatever. And raise the energy of everyone else. So leadership is also a lot of, you know, acting. <laughs> not in a bad way, not in a fake way. But let's say, if I'm talking to you, it's like, good afternoon, everyone. I'm so happy you came back after, after lunch. Right, and let's have a good day now. Or whatever is left of the day. Turn up, going to be. Good, uh, good evening everyone, good afternoon, so nice to see you. It's a different energy level. Now, can't you do that? You can. Does it have to be fake? No. So, leader's mood. So every human interaction, there is an impact on energy levels. We are, we are transferring energy. So the interaction has a positive outcome, a negative outcome, or a neutral outcome. Every human interaction has a positive, negative, or neutral outcome. Let's say, okay, just give me one of those bottles if you don't mind. So let's say you are in a restaurant, all right, and you ask for a bottle of water, and I am the waiter. 
So I come up to you. <laughs> now, not a word was spoken, but there is an interaction which creates a what? Positive, negative, or neutral outcome? Negative. Are you going to give me a tip? No. no. Good. <laughs> it's another another example. So this time. <laughs> Very good with you, all right? <laughs> Can you see? Every interaction has a positive, negative, or neutral outcome. So we don't want negative. I think that's clear. What about neutral? Neutral come up Is it okay? How many of you are okay with a neutral outcome? Anyone okay with a neutral outcome? Shape? Neutral? Neutral? I, do, I would say don't go for neutral. You know why? Let's say if you are the boss of all these people, you are standing here talking to a group of 20, 30, 40, 50, 80 people for one hour. At the end of that one hour, everybody leaves absolutely the same as how they walked in. That's neutral. What's the point? You just wasted one hour of your time. If there's 80 people, another 80 hours, you just wasted 81 man hours. Have you realized? What's the point? Neutral is nothing has changed. They were okay before, now they're still okay. They were upset before, they're still upset. They were happy before, they're still happy. They have waste of time. So I would say, again, we need to strike this balance. So we don't want neutral either. We want positive. So if people think I'm am, I am a good boss, I'm kind, I'm whatever, I don't know what my people think, they haven't told me. Uh, but I hope they're also thinking, but there's no nonsense. You can be very close to someone, you can go out of your way to help that person, you can be fun to be with, but you should also think, okay, but when it comes down to work, now we have to be formal. Now we have to get the job done. Otherwise, that person doesn't become very happy after that. And then it can be different. So I think it's striking that balance. So the, 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 the leader that comes to mind when I think of your question is this famous example, Herb Kelleher, Southwestern Airlines, where they say when Herb Kelleher walks down a corridor, he exudes positive energy right round him. So everyone who comes into contact with him like goes away infected with positive energy. <laughs> Which I think is fantastic. Imagine, you're, you're the leader walking down and everyone around you is like -da 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 -da, getting positive because you've just passed by. Is, isn't that awesome? I would say, from my perspective, just be yourself. You cannot be anyone other than who you are. But always make sure the work is getting done. So, this, this saying, do not take kindness for weakness. Do not take friendship for weakness. Don't try to, you know, ride on my shoulders. It's not going to. If I try to be, try to be like any one of you, I'll fail miserably and I'll be fake. So I'm not being anyone here other than who I am, really. But we can always improve. We can always improve. So if you are a person who loves people, who loves to be bubbly, who loves to do this thing, do that. That's a unique talent that you have. So every interaction has a positive, negative or neutral outcome. If that's the interaction, what's the outcome? <coughs> Shout out. Positive, negative, neutral. Negative, right? Like, ah, no, it's, a, it's, a, it's a protest or whatever. Positive. Sri Lanka just won the World Cup. Positive. Okay. <laughs> I love it. No faith. Okay. <laughs> positive, negative or neutral? Worse than negative. Vijayana, neutral, neutral. They don't even care whether the teacher is there or not. Negative means at least we care. At least we say something. At least I care enough to be angry. Neutral is I don't even care enough to be angry. You are, don't matter. You are immaterial. I think that's really bad. <laughs> to be irrelevant I think is much worse than for someone to even get angry with you or me. Isn't it, Vijita? Right? That, that would be really awful. And that is 
a nice happening party. Hopefully you are energized and positive. Have you noticed sometimes you walk into a party and as soon as you open the door and walk in, you get hit, hit by positive energy, positive vibes. Have you... As soon as you walk in, people are like, ah, ah, ah. Have you also sometimes gone in for a meeting once? You open the door, go for a meeting. And now what do we do? Now we you know this problem is happening and everybody is like very sad. And you think you have walk on, walk on, uh, 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 walked into a funeral house. <laughs> Anyone experience that? Go into a meeting, everyone is like dead. <laughs> have, you, have you realized that we have so much of common experiences? We are 80 different people from so many different industries, but lots of common experience. What is that telling us? Human beings are the same. So during, uh, during COVID, I had a major problem. All my sources of revenue dried up. <laughs> so we like to do training programs for companies like Virtusa and all these people, hint, hint. No, no companies were giving us any work during COVID. No one, wants to, no one wants to meet us physically anywhere. I have a background in IT and I never figured out that I can do training online. <laughs> Stupid me. So forced to change now, forced to do something different, we start doing training online. And then I find people wanting to join from overseas. Now the first time I had people joining from UK and US, non-Sri Lankan but actually, actually, actually real Americans, different, slightly different color to us. The first time I was really scared, I was really nervous because there was one professor also who joined. I think, what on earth can I teach this guy? Right? And he might ask so many questions, I might be, you know, uh, so embarrassed and all that. And what I realized is, no matter where they are from, no matter how senior or junior they are, wherever in the world, people are people. So I'd like to share that experience with you. People are people. Don't ever be nervous after that. So anyway. So what is the point here? Emotions are contagious. That's the takeaway. Emotions are contagious. Emotions are passed on from one person to another much faster than any virus. So always better to have a smile on your face rather than a grumpy look. However important we want to look, if you're smiling, you are, you, are, you are transferring positive emotions. We think sometimes the white-skinned people are very aggressive, very arrogant. No, there are beautiful people, lovely people, people are people. There are arrogant Sri Lankans, there are arrogant Americans. There are humble Sri Lankans, there are humble Americans. People are people. And I realized that and that gave me a huge comfort factor. In a matter of seconds, if I am happy, I'll be transferring that to you. If you are not, you'll be transferring that to me. Have you noticed that we are all still awake? No one fell asleep in the afternoon? And isn't that like a miracle? Honestly, think about it. 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 2.30 is generally the time we put a small nap. No, it never worked. Huh? No. <laughs> One of the reasons is the energy flow from you to me and from me to you. Isn't it? Isn't it? So, energy keeps it going. Emotions are contagious. So, watch it. <laughs> so, actually an experiment was done to prove this point. This group of researchers took one group of people uh, to, uh, to a site, got them to jump out of a plane for the first time. And while jumping out of a plane, they had them wear a special suit which had sweat pads on it to collect their sweat. Alright? Has anyone here jumped out of a plane? For fun? No. Okay. I will never do that. <laughs> My idea of fun is something else. <laughs> no bungee jumping or roller coasters for me. <laughs> Give me a nice book. <laughs> I'll have fun. Okay, so jumping on a plane. If you jump out of a plane for the first time, would you be like this? Or would you be more like that? <laughs> Probably more like this, right? So what they did was they got this guy jump out of a plane, collected their sweat, and they got another group of people to go to the gym, work out, and collected their sweat as well. So what they've done now, they have the sweat pads from people who jumped out of a plane, people who uh, went to a gym and worked out. Now they got another group of people, divided them in half, 
send them for fMRI scan, brain scan. When let's say this group of people went through the machine, you were breathing the sweat, the, 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 the sweat pads were there of the people who went for exercise. And they looked at the brain scan, nothing different, same areas are lit up, nothing, normal. When this side was sent through the machine, you had the sweat pads of the guy who jumped through the plane. Now obviously when you jump out of a plane for the first time, you're going to get scared, right? There's adrenaline, there's cortisol, all of that. What they found was, everyone who went through the machine on this side, the fear center of the brain lit up. The fear center, so there's a part of the brain, when you're scared, that, that gets activated. That was activated in all of you. Who knew nothing? You just went for a scan. What had happened? The emotions of this person had been transferred to this crowd through the sweat. So what they realized is emotions are contagious. But we know that on a fundamental level, isn't it? Have you realized on the days that you go home after work when you are not really in a great mood? Okay, let's take a scenario. Let me ask you, who of you, of the guys, has ever been asked by your wife, when you come home, please bring a loaf of bread with you? So Akila now has a hard day at work at Fenton's. Goes home in a bad mood. As soon as he comes to his lovely wife Tanya, asks, Akila, did you bring the bread? <laughs> now what happens? What happens? How is Akila respond? Bread? I had a horrible day at work today. You stayed at home the whole day and you asked me for bread. Correct? Of course then Tanya would say, Oh, I'm so sorry Akila for even asking you. Come, please sit down. Right? Let me bring you a cup of tea. Let me take your shoes off. Let me give you a foot massage. But in reality, what would happen? As soon as Akila says, bread, then Tanya says, the only thing I have to do is bring a loaf of bread. You can't do that also. Now they are arguing, now the child is crying, now the dog is barking. The child... What has happened? Chaos. What has happened? His negative mood has infected everyone in the household. Have you realized that? Who has been there, done that? Yes? Learn it from this. Our moods are contagious. Our moods are contagious. So there used to be, uh, when I was working at Bodyline many years ago, I used to go in a van to office. And the driver of that van was such a nice bubbly guy. He would be smiling at people all along the road. And then I noticed there were people always waiting on the road for the van to pass to smile at him, to wave at him, and he will wave back. Beautiful person. I also actually, on a different level, try to do this. Much less level. <laughs> See, you pass people on the road, smile at them. You're driving, another car passes, smile, wave at them. Doesn't cost us anything. But you're passing some positivity, which that person might now take and, you know, pass on to someone else. They say we only pass down this road of life once. You may never see someone again. But just an act of, just smiling or a little act of kindness could make a huge difference in somebody's day. You don't know the person at all, never seen him before. Doesn't hurt. Doesn't hurt. Yeah, that person may have been so upset about to commit suicide or something, thinking nobody in this world likes me. And then one person smiles at him and says, ha, ah, at least somebody smiled at me. Maybe I'll give it another shot. <laughs> you, you never know, you never know.